Hi, I'm going to show you how to add clients, sites and apartments and then we'll go on and look at how to design three different sorts of wardrobe uh, starting with the sliding door wardrobe and then a linen style post style interior and then a walk-in robe. You'll probably have worked out for yourself to add a new client, simply click on the new client button at the top of the screen, type in the client's name And then go on and complete as much of the additional information as you need. Once you've finished, click Save. So that will add a client. It'll also add a, a default site for that client. So if it's just a retail uh, job you're working on, that's all you need to do. You can carry on and, and start designing wardrobes or shower screens. In this case, because it's a builder and they're obviously not going to install uh, their the robes and shower screens in their office, you need to set up a site for them as well. So to do that, click on the Add Site button. Put in the address of that. Uh, again, put as much information in as you like and click Save. All right, now this particular site is also going to be a, a multiple occupancy site. In other words, an apartment, block of apartments. So for this, we need to start adding apartments. It's a good idea to add all of the apartments that you're going to create designs for. It just makes it quicker to create them from within the design area. So add an apartment, obviously click the apartment button. Uh, put in the apartment number. 101 and click save. Okay, now we're ready to start adding some wardrobes to these apartments. So to start, simply click on one of the apartments and then click on the bedroom icon up top. That will open up the uh, wardrobe design area. I obviously, you want to select uh, use the selected client. So this design will now be linked to that particular client, site and apartment. So we're going to add a simple U-shape design, wall-to-wall, -wall, um, sliding doors and interior. So we click on that U-shape icon there, that will draw the basic room and add a wardrobe to it. We can choose whether we do just the doors or just the internals, we're going to do both. Um, we can change the overall width of the room, so we'll just make a small change to that. Click enter. And change the robe height so again we'll just alter that again after you do each of those either tab out of the field or hit the enter key and that will make the changes to the design um, the rest of the options here we won't trouble with it for the minute um, they probably won't need changing for more simple designs that you're doing anyway at the minute um, first thing we will do though is save this wardrobe so if we click on the save button on the left hand side there you see it's confirming the site and so on that it's uh, going to be linked to. Put in the design name, so we'll call this bed one, and click the save button. Okay, now you can carry on and work on the design. First thing to do will be to go into the style options. This is where you select all the materials for this particular wardrobe. So in this <coughs> particular case, we've got basically uh, 9mm one of my doors in textured white. To change that to a different material, we simply click on the option there and select for the sake of argument mirror uh, and we can then work our way down making changes to these other options as required change the color etc so once we're happy with the with the uh, design we'll just do the same change to the jams just to make it look correct once you're happy with all the style options style selections you can then continue on to do the uh, design the interiors so to do that click on the interior design option on the side so various ways of doing this. We have a, a, a selection of preset designs, which by clicking on those will uh, instantly design the whole interior for you with just with that one click. So these, you can select the nearest to the one you want to end up with and then continue to edit this in ways I'll show you in a minute. Or you can start from basic first principles of simple three hanging sections. You'll see that what's been done is it's added as many sections as there are doors for that, that given width the row. You can change the number of doors. If you, for some reason, want wider doors or narrower doors than it's worked to, it will always do the most economic selection for you. But if you want to change that, you can do that in the previous step, and that will then change the number of interior internal sections that are created. For a minute, we'll leave this as a, as a three-section one. So to have to work on the individual units or sections within that design, simply click on one of them and that will bring up a list of uh, optional units in the left hand side here. Before we get into selecting one of those, I'll just show you the various operations you can do on each of the sections. So the first one is simply to make a duplicate of the existing selected selection. It will just literally split that in two. 
I click that button there, as you can see what's happened, it's taken that original width unit and just divided it into two, created a duplicate in each. <clears throat> you can change the width of any of these, simply by clicking in the right hand uh, pane there and changing the size. <coughs> you can delete a section, and that will then add that the width of that section to one of the others. And then finally, if you collect multiple sections, you can equalise them all to be the same width. So we'll just do that quickly there by clicking the equals button. All right, let me just go back to the unaltered version simply by going back and clicking on the hanging section. And I'll just show you how to switch one of these out. All right, so clicking on the middle section again. To change to a different type of unit in here, I simply select it. Select what it is you want to change to on the left-hand side here. Uh, we'll change it to some shelves. And then over on the right-hand side here, click the switch button. You've got the same thing down here, if that's more convenient to you. Uh, click the switch button, and that will add that unit in, in place. <clears throat> if you want to change the size of a unit as you add it, you can do that. So I'll just click on... Uh, that section again and repeat the process with some drawers. So you'll see that uh, at, before the drawers are added to the design we've got the option to select one of the preset standard widths so we'll choose a 457 and when we switch that size of unit gets added as you can see by the dimension at the bottom here. Within things like drawer units you've also got the ability to change the type of drawers that are being used so if you select the unit you want to change over on the right hand side here you'll see this uh, the list uh, which enables you to go down and, in, uh, and select a different option. In this case, we'll go to the 220 gap drawers. Uh, if we update that, we'll see that that's now putting in uh, two drawers with gaps above them. Uh, and we can make individual changes to the others if we need to as well. So the top one, we can select that individually. And then down at the bottom here, we can select <coughs> a, the different component we want to change to, which will be a 125 gap drawer. I can select the right one. There. and make the change okay so we've now changed all those drawers into the gap style drawers okay that pretty much completes a uh, sliding wardrobe and uh, giving an idea of how the internals can be uh, altered and designed uh, now we'll have a look at how to do a similar process but with a nib wall room and with a linen interior as this next row will also be for the same apartment, uh, we can simply go ahead and click the uh, Add New Room button on the top there, and this will now be linked to that same apartment. If we wanted to do one for a different apartment, we'd simply click on the Client Area, a Client button, go back to the Client Area, select the different apartment, click on the Add Row button again, and then follow the same process back to here. So we're going to work on a nib wall room this time. Click the top option there. So this is one that has doors set inside with walls each side of it from, uh, uh, from the outside and then a standard interior inside of that. Same applies. We can click uh, to, do, uh, to do just the doors or the interior. Again, we'll stick with doing both of them for the minute. Uh, changing the width this time, uh, changing the wall width rather, changes the width of the back wall. And if we want to change the opening, uh, we can then change the nibs either side of that. So we can make them odd sizes if we wanted to. We'll do them to the same size. So as you probably noticed, that's just changed the width of the other side. And then, of course, we'll change the width of the doors that are going to be fitted into that space. Having done that, uh, again, we've got style, style options we can change. We'll leave those as they are for now. And then move on into the internals area. So what we want to do in here is just simply add a, a very simple um, linen style interior. To do that, if we click on the uh, preset option at the bottom here, that will add that with one click. So we've got the, the shelving all added in and the, the posts that support them spaced evenly across the width of the row. Okay, that completes uh, this uh, nib wall room and the linen interior. Next we'll move on to a walk-in row. Uh, we'll add it to a different apartment this time, so I can show you how you would do that from here. So to go back to the client area, so you click on the clients button, you'll come back to showing the list of designs that we've just created for apartment 101. To go and pick a different apartment, click on the little arrow at the top and select the new apartment 102. Just confirm that's what we see here. And then click on bedroom, select your client again. All right, now to add a walk-in wardrobe, <laughs> click on walk-in wardrobes. Three different shapes you can choose from. We'll go for a simple rectangular shape for now. 
if I click on that option, to change the dimensions of the room, so you click on a wall, type in the new size and hit the enter key, that'll redraw the room, resizing the opposite wall to suit. And then from there, we can start adding wardrobe sections to the room. So click on the wall you want to add one to and click add wardrobe. Now the order in which you add the robes areas to the room will determine how the corners run. Because we've added this one first, this one will run into the corner. And if we click on the right hand wall and repeat the process, you'll see this one is added and butted up to the first one. To reverse that corner, obviously we'll just do the two um, areas in a different order. So to design the internals, click on that particular wall that you want to work on. Click on the interior design area. Once you're in this area, you can switch between the different wall areas simply by clicking on them on the little mini plan here. So we'll change this section to some shelves. Click on that option as you'd expect, change its width and click the switch key and you'll get an alert. Now the reason for that is because in a walk-in row, these corner sections are set to a fixed width predetermined by the distance that this upright would normally be from the corner. So to achieve what we're trying to do here, in other words, have a wider hanging section and the set of shelves here, we need to first change this unit from a variable unit back into, sorry, from a fixed width unit into a variable width unit by clicking this option. We now repeat the process and select the shelves again, change the width to 457 and do the switch. You'll see it now does exactly what we want it to do. All right, the rest of the design process within a walk-in is exactly the same as it was within the sliding wardrobe. So we can simply work our way around achieving whatever changes we want to make, perhaps switching to double hanging and so on and so forth. Just as a side issue, you probably noticed that little alert came up, so it will warn you if you're creating sections that are wider than, uh, than suggested, um, and then you can make any changes you need to according to that, or if you're happy with, uh, with it being as it is, just leave it as it is. One last thing I wanted to show you before we finish is if you wanted to add a shoe shelf to any of these sections, you'd obviously need full height um, uprights to be able to do so. So to do that, and I've just gone back to the original version of this wall to show you, um, simply click on the section where you want to add it and then select this unit here. That will add, as you see, two uprights to it. From there, if you go to the units inside units and select shoe shelves, and click the add button that will add a shoe shelf into the bottom of that one you can change the quantity of shoe shelves if you wanted to or indeed change the spacing as well if needs be and click the update button to to make the change and with that that completes this uh, tutorial if you've got any questions please just flick us an email um, or give us a call and we'll do our best to help you